welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. Today we are covering A to Z of my recent Botox journey. So if you are new here, welcome. So happy to have you. I recently got Botox. It has been almost a month, not exactly a month, about three weeks. And I just felt like one, obviously I'm gonna be transparent about this and tell you guys the entire process, what I think about the results, the before and after, all of that stuff. But also I just wanted you to know that it's something that I got and if you have questions about it, we can openly talk about it. I am not the type of person who's going to keep those things from you guys because it is going to affect the way that makeup sits on my face. And I just, I don't see the point in hiding it. The more you hide something like that, the more it seems like it's something to be hidden and I just don't think it is. Beyond that, before we jump in, I just want to say that if you are someone who is anti-Botox and you have absolutely no interest in it and you're just here to be upset that I got it, honestly, just you can go ahead and exit now. There's no reason for you to be here and to waste your precious time being mad at me. But if you are considering Botox, you have questions because you have sensitive skin or you're nervous about what the pain is like, how does it feel? Basically an anxious person's experience with Botox, keep on watching. So the day that I got my Botox done, I asked on Instagram, which it's at the Rudy Berry. I said, ask any questions that you may have about the Botox experience. And then in three weeks, I will answer them all. So that is where I'm getting most of my questions from. I'm gonna try and put them in an order that makes sense. But first I thought I would start with, okay, let me say, I want to say why I felt that I wanted to get it. But at the same time, I want you to know that this is a like a journey that you, you should decide on on your own regardless of what other people may say in the space which like obviously that's easier said than done but just because i get it for these reasons doesn't necessarily mean that you need to get it for that reason as well i guess is what i'm trying to say so yes why did you decide to get botox i got this question quite a bit and honestly like i said it is personal depending on who you are but i got it for two reasons one i'm absolutely not gonna hide behind a veil of like oh i just wanted it for my headaches no i felt that i had two very deep set lines on my forehead because I was such an expressive person. I am an expressive person. And as I was getting older, not that I'm old, I just felt like I wanted to try and prevent those from turning into long-term wrinkles. So that was one part of it was that I was seeing these lines start to set in. The second part of it is that I had gotten a facial at the place where I get Botox, which I'll tell you in a second. And we had talked about Botox and the process of it and just kind of getting into questions and answers with my nurse practitioner. And she had mentioned Botox actually helps with sweat production. So some people get it in their armpits or in their feet to help with oil and sweat production. And as you guys Guys know I typically deal with bacterial and fungal acne almost every single summer I've done videos on them over the past year and a half just talking about how my skin hates the heat so it was also partially a experiment to see how my skin would change with Botox and if it would produce less oil less grease less sweat therefore less acne so that was the two main reasons that I wanted to try it Another question that I got a lot that I don't feel I can answer personally is when should I start getting it? That is completely up to you. It's it's a lot of people have different opinions on baby Botox, preventative Botox, what age you should get it. But I think it's up to you to talk to a nurse practitioner or go to a med spa and talk to someone face to face because they can tell you what they see and what they would recommend if it's something you're interested in. I'm never going to tell someone when they should start or when or if they never want it. Like it's a completely personal decision and because I'm not licensed in any of this, I'm not going to tell you when to start. I just am going to share my experience. Another large question I got is how did I decide where to go and who to work with? So I went to Skin Farm in Nashville, Tennessee. My nurse practitioner's name is Mallory and I will leave all the information on this below if you are in the Nashville area and you're curious. I had been to Skin Farm previously for a facial and Skin Farm is a medical, I'm not a dermatologist's office, but they are medically trained estheticians. I don't really know the right word to say they're nurse practitioners, but they do mostly cosmetic procedures. So I first went originally for a facial because I wanted to try the gold infusion there, which is basically where they micro dart like hyaluronic acid and glowy serums into your skin. I absolutely loved it. So when I was there, I was able to chat through the entire experience with Mallory and talk about what that would look like and just get a real feel for it. So I guess my, my recommendation would be wherever you're going or thinking about going, go and get a smaller thing done first like a facial or a hydrofacial or something. So you can get a lay of the land, decide if there's someone you really jive with who could help you in 
kind of understanding the process at that specific place. Make sure that it's a reputable place. If you can find a place that has either a doctor or a nurse practitioner that is available to do your injections who has done it for quite some time, you can see before and afters of their work. That's what I would recommend a thousand percent. I felt really comfortable with Mallory because one, she was near my age. Two, she has Botox and it looked incredibly natural. And three, on her Instagram, she posts a lot of before and after pictures. So I felt comfortable with her work. And I know a lot of the questions were also relating to the cost. So again, as this woman says, it varies by location, but I wanted to mention that I also got Dysport instead of Botox, which we'll get into, but at my skin farm location, both Botox and Dysport are $13 a unit. So to break it down, Botox is injected by a unit. I don't really know why it's just the way it is, but when you go in for a consult, they can tell you based on what level of movement you want in your face, how many units that they would recommend for your face. So then you would multiply how many units that is by $13 in my case, and that would be your total. I would say if you are brand new to Botox, you should expect to pay anywhere from $250 to $500, depending on how much movement you want or not movement. If you wanna go in and say, I wanna be frozen, it's gonna be probably closer to $500, $600. But if you want baby Botox like me, it's gonna be closer to $250 to $300. So this is an interesting question, which is what was the intended purpose or desired outcome Come for your Botox. So for me going into it, I was really wanting to focus on the upper forehead area because I was able to make four distinct rolls with my forehead. And that is where I always had the most movement and where I was seeing those wrinkles start to set in. I wasn't even thinking about my 11s, which is the space between your two eyebrows. But when I went in with Mallory, she mentioned that if I was to just get the Botox up here, that these muscles would start to work over time and you would know notice that. You would noti notice the movement here while no movement would be up here and it would just look strange. So we sat down together at the morning of my appointment. I did a ton of facial movement and she pointed out the, the different areas where she felt an injection should be made. I told her that I still wanted movement. I still wanted to be able to look surprised and to raise my eyebrows and to look mad. I didn't want to have distinct lines. So having that conversation with her, she recommended that I start with six in the forehead and 12 between my brows. So when I first heard this, I was like, wait a second, 12 between my brows. But luckily, and hopefully you hearing this from me will help you as well. I called a friend beforehand and said, how much did you get in your first try? Like I need to know kind of what, what a good number is because if you're going into it blind and not knowing what to compare it to and you hear 20 units of Botox, you're like, what? That seems like so much. 20 is like a very minimal amount, okay? So we're talking, she considered this to be a sprinkling of Botox on me. So I was totally down with it. She mentioned that the 12 here, it's always going to be more between your brows and on your upper forehead because you have more muscles pulling in different directions to get that scrunch. Whereas on your forehead, it's one sheet of muscles that causes the movement and so you need less in the upper forehead. That all made sense to me. I was excited for it and I felt good with 20 units. I also decided to go with Dysport instead of the Botox brand. So if you've ever heard of Botox, you just immediately think that Botox is the procedure. At least that's what I thought. Like, oh, you're getting Botox. But just like Kleenex brand or Tupperware, those are actually brand names that have kind of taken on what the thing is. So Botox is a brand. Skin Farm offers Botox and Dysport. Dysport is another brand. When I talked to Mallory, she had mentioned they're both very good, but she had noticed that Dysport either can last a little bit longer and also kick in a little bit quicker, but requires more units to get the job done. But I was like, what do you get? I said, what do you get? Whatever you get is what I want. So we went with Dysport. I honestly don't think there's too much of a difference. It's just something to talk about and to consider with your nurse practitioner. Now let's talk about what some of my fears were going into it because I want you to know that if you are someone with anxiety or sensitive skin, you are not alone in the fears that you have had about Botox. My fear was that I was gonna have droopy eyes because of TikTok, of course. I was afraid of it, me being allergic to it and like dying on the spot which I know a lot of other people have said, but like no one really talks about it. I was uh, nervous about the pain level. I was nervous about the results. If I was nervous that my forehead was gonna make me feel claustrophobic because I had heard that. Like I had heard all these horror stories. And let me tell you right now, none of those things have happened. I was terrified going into it and I laid all of that out to my nurse practitioner and said, this
this is all the things I'm afraid of. And she was able to talk to me through that and say, here's this, here's that. Nobody is really allergic to Botox. And if they are, we're all nurse practitioners. She just was able to help quell my fears. And also I got to the point where I realized I'm here, I'm sitting in the chair, we're gonna do the damn thing and I'm gonna get through it. And I did. So the actual procedure of getting Botox, let's talk about that. Now that we've covered the intro and what my fears were when I sat down in the chair, I will say there is no numbing to the process, but the pain is pretty minimal. I do wanna mention that it is more pain than I think people say. It's uncomfortable, it doesn't feel good. It kind of feels like you're being stung on your forehead. It lasts about three seconds for each one, and the injection sites are all kind of mapped out on your face. You're not seeing this happen. I kept my eyes closed for most of them, but guys, the needle is like this big. It is so, so small. It's not something that you're gonna notice or see. And when it's done, being injected, the pain is completely gone. It's not something that lingers. It's not something that continues to hurt. It's like one, two, three, done, one, two, three, done. And because I got such a small amount, I was done in like two minutes, maybe even less than that. But again, I do want to say it does hurt. There is pain associated with it. I'm going to put it out there. I have had people and friends pass out from Botox and that is simply because they were not prepared. They hadn't drank any water that day. They had just worked out. They hadn't eat. So just be smart, just like you would if you were going to the doctor and getting your blood drawn. Have a snack with you. Have some water beforehand. Try and relax that morning and lay low. Just because you are getting something done, it is not extreme, but you just want to have your body be prepared for a new experience. So I had no issues. I did not pass out. Once it was done, I felt completely fine. I didn't even have blood bleeding or bruising at all. Within 30 minutes, it looked like nothing had happened to me, which was amazing, but bruising and bleeding can come along with Botox sometimes. Completely normal. You can also experience headaches for up to five days afterwards. Just make sure that you talk to your nurse practitioner about all of it because obviously that's not what I'm here to do but one thing that I will say is you cannot lay down within four to six hours after getting your Botox so I got mine at two I stayed upright until I went to bed because it takes about four hours for it to set in so if you're laying down it can migrate before it's fully set so just keep that in mind no working out no hats because that can also move it just be normal for like the rest of the afternoon and you will be fine. I was nervous about sleeping that night because I thought, okay, what if I am on my side? Am I gonna wake up with it droopy on one side? Don't worry about it. After four hours, you're completely fine. But if you feel like you wanna sleep on your back that night, go for it. That's what I did for peace of mind. So I had no side effects, negative side effects whatsoever. I didn't have really any irritation. I didn't get headaches like at all. I started noticing the the effects of my Dysport within literally like one or two days. I'm going to pop in videos from each day so you can see the updates. And I would say by day five, I was looking pretty damn good. They say that Dysport can take two days to start to kick in, which is pretty fast when you think about it. And by a full week to two weeks time, I think is when I had my best results. So I will go ahead and show you what I'm looking at now. This is about three weeks in. You can see I do have a little bit of lines up here, but they don't stick. And a lot of that is because of my skull muscle actually pulling down. But if I just raise my eyebrows, I don't really get that. I also, this is as much as I can furrow. And I wanna talk about next, what it feels like when you have Botox in your face. People have said a lot of different things and it's really hard to explain because if you've never had it, how can you describe that feeling? How can you relate to that feeling? So the best way that I've been able to describe the feeling of having Botox is two things. One, you know when it's really, really cold outside and you try and go like this with your nose, and it feels like it's frozen. It's moving, but it doesn't kind of feel like it. It kind of feels like that. Or when your skin is really dry and it feels like it's being tugged a little bit, it kind of feels like that, but without the fact that it is actually dry. Does that make sense? Like, I still feel like I'm moving my forehead, but it's just not happening. So there's no pain associated, there's no numbness. It's not uncomfortable whatsoever. I could see if you got too much, how it could be uncomfortable, but with the amount that I got, I barely notice it. And it just makes your forehead look so shiny, so smooth, so beautiful. So in terms of the aesthetics of it, I love the way it looks. I've gotten a lot of comments on the way that it looks and I'm very happy about that. On the acne side of things, I'm still dealing with forehead acne 
acne. I don't know that it's done so much for me in that way, but I, again, I'm only on week three of this. And Botox tends to last and Dysport tend to last for up to three months. So leading into the next question would be, how often do you have to re-up your Botox? If you want to keep those results year round, you probably need to go two or three times a year, depending on how many units you get or how your body and your skin reacts to that. So this is the first time I've ever had it. I don't know how fast my body's gonna metabolize the Dysport. I may need to go back in two months. I may need to go back in three months. It may be twice a year. I'm not really sure, but I do think that I will end up going back because I do like the way that it looks and I like that those two lines that were previously set in my forehead have vanished. I'm gonna come back to you on the acne because if I can make it from June through August without getting fungal acne and the only thing I've changed is getting Botox, okay, we might be getting somewhere. But because it's just starting to get hot out, I can't say a thousand percent yet. And if you don't like Botox or if you go get Dysport and you don't like it, it will completely wear off within three months, four months, however long it takes your body to metabolize it. It is not a permanent thing. So again, if you wanna kinda of play around with it, see what you think and you don't like it, that's okay too. It's not something that you have to decide on a forever situation. Okay, I've, I've looked through all of my questions and I'm feeling like I answered pretty much every single one, but if I haven't or you have another question that you wanna ask me, leave them in the comments below. I'll probably do a follow-up video in the next few months to talk about how it's settled in and how it's starting to wear off or if you have additional questions that are really quick i can answer them in the comments also feel free to dm me on instagram i'm always answering things there again it's completely your decision i don't want you to base what you may or may not get off of me but i'm just happy to share the information where i feel like a lot of times people are hiding it which i don't understand so i hope this was helpful to you in some way and helped demystify the idea of botox or dysport and i will see you guys in the next video really soon bye